Okay, so to start out, the pack that everything is going to go in is a DG3 from Crossfire. It's a three day, 55 liter pack. Uh, on the pack, I have a little ferro rod attached to make some fire when needed. Uh, inside the pack, I have this glaze orange dry bag. Uh, this doubles as a signaling bag, and it's the dry bag that my sleeping bag goes in so it doesn't get wet. Uh, sleep pad because I'm a sissy and I need this in order to sleep in the field I found out. And a sleeping bag uh, in the stuff sack. The sleeping bags I think rated around 30 degrees uh, so between that and layers I anticipate being plenty warm. For food and water uh, I have nine MREs. Uh, these are the civilian kind, not the full military kind so they're already pretty stripped down. So I won't be stripping those down, leave those as is. Uh, for water, I have a total of seven liters, so I have three here in the bladder. I have two extra quarts, uh, one with a canteen cup for heating up some of the food, for heating up drink mixes, whatever as appropriate and as able to do that. So two of those, and then I have two other uh, liters of water that will be in my fighting load, which we'll cover a little bit later. Uh, I also have uh, peanut butter because that's always good to have in the field. I have a bunch of little snacks here, a couple of cliff bars, a protein bar, a couple of packs of Skittles. For my cook kit, I have a fire dragon stove, uh, as mentioned for the canteen cup, with three cells, so not enough for every meal obviously, but just enough to give you a little morale boost. The lid, the lid for the canteen cup, a little rag to wipe out the cup, and a lighter wrapping duct tape. That all goes inside its own dry bag. So that stays separate and dry. I calculated about a half gallon of water per day. Uh, in case that I'm off those calculations, I do have a dirty water bag along with a water filter so that I am able to make more water in the field. A couple of personal care items. I have a couple small bungees and small zip ties. Uh, this is for a repair kit in case something breaks or needs to be reattached or fixed in the field. This is a field repair kit that came with the bag. It's a couple patches, a couple extra buckles. So that if anything goes wrong with the bag, that that can be readily fixed in the field as well. This is just a small boo-boo kit, uh, some band-aids, some hand sanitizers, some chapstick, just general take care of you stuff. Continuing on with personal care, I have some body powder, some mouthwash, uh, second chapstick, and then this is some Luco tape uh, that I have that's great for cuts, blisters, whatever. Uh, that stuff is absolutely magic, will stop blisters in the heartbeat. My uniform is permethrin, uh, and so is my gear. However, I also have a towelette here that's a deep woods towelette uh, to keep the bugs off you, although it's cold, so hopefully that won't be needed. I have just one hands warmer in case it gets real cold uh, and or you need it to sleep at night uh, in order to stay warm. That goes right in your pockets or your sleeping bag. I have some large wet wipes because I'm not a filthy animal. Extra batteries, I have extra double A's, extra triple A's, and extra CR123's. That goes with all of my equipment here to make sure it stays up and running and is functional. And if anything goes down, we can keep it running. That goes inside its own dry bag, so those don't get ruined. This is a multicam pack cover. Uh, this does not actually fit over the pack when I have the bedroll attached. However, uh, to keep my pack protected from the rain at night, uh, and or when we're able to stop moving, if I'm able to take that bedroll off, this goes great over the pack and uh, is super waterproof so it protects the bag. I will be taking the poncho that's laid out here as well for some kind of low grade shelter and or extra rain coverage because uh, we're anticipating rain. I do have a hang of paracord in here. Uh, I also have some extra tent stakes so that I could stake it down and make some kind of low shelter as would be situationally appropriate. I have a watch cap because it's expected to be cold. This is a sniper veil, it's kind of green tan on one side, woodland on the other. Uh, this is just to further camouflage our position and or gear. This is an e-tool. Uh, I have an e-tool, of course, to dig latrines, further camouflage our position and any other general field use. For PPE gear and uniform, uh, I have eye protection. I have a set of green gloves. I'm going to wear my green cover out. Uh, and then I went with a multicam uniform because that seems to blend in best with the environment. Uh, I have Gore-Tex waterproof boots, because again, cold, wet, and rainy, and then I'll be wearing my knee pads out. For extra layers and water protection, uh, I have a Gore-Tex top and bottom. Gore-Tex top I will wear out. Uh, Gore-Tex bottom will go in the pack storage. I also brought an extra waffle layer for when it gets cold at night. 
Uh, I am wearing a thermal layer underneath my uniform, just the top, not the bottom, but I have a waffle layer top as well. I have a thermal layer bottom, uh, again, in case it gets cold at night and or when we're stationary, not moving around a whole bunch, I need to layer up to stay warm so you don't freeze. Other clothing items, uh, I have three pairs of underwear, uh, three pairs of socks, and then just two extra t-shirts. That all goes inside its own dry bag. For navigation purposes, I have a map case along with a map of the area. I have my lens static compass. I have, tre I have pace beads, pace count beads attached to my gear. And I also wear my watch. This is my extra set of webbing. This is totally stripped out right now, except for my IFAT that is on my webbing. It's just a standard IFAT with the scissors and two tourniquets that's on the webbing. Everything else is laid out. I lied. The other thing I have in my webbing is some black athletic tape. That's for general field repair stuff and or cuts, scrapes, whatever. Uh, anything you would need tape for, that stays on my kit all the time. For a fighting load, uh, I have a 16 inch rifle, tourniquet on the gun, sling attached to the rifle, optic, light, and a cam. This rifle is a real rifle and I will show you the empty chamber right now. Real rifle, look. I have seven magazines for the rifle, uh, one in the gun, six on the kit. Uh, that way if we need to leave, we can mag dump and run away. In here is a PBS 14, so this is for observation at night. I'm not going to wear a helmet or anything to attach it to. This is just to be able to hand, have a handheld to look through at night to observe. I purposely did not bring a binoculars because this is in a wooded environment along a trail, so visibility is expected to be limited, so we do not have binoculars laid out here. Other items I have in my fighting load are another lighter wrapped in duct tape, a little camouflage compact so that I can touch up my base camouflage in the field, and then a right in the rain notepad and pen so that I have something to record my salute report on. Last two items that go in the fighting load are my knife. It has a straight back edge so that I can use it for the ferro rod attached to the pack as needed. Also just for general field use and stabby stabby use. And then a red headlamp so that I can see at night, work under my poncho, etc. One item I did forget to mention is I do have a rifle cleaning kit. Uh, this is just a rod, lube, brushes, standard little Alice rifle cleaning kit, uh, along with a rag to clean off the gun, wipe off solvent, etc. Okay, that's my entire loadout for three days. Let's see what it looks like when I have it all on. This would be my salute report. This is Bravo 1-3, stand by for a salute report. We are located at 8690-4875 break. The size of the element is a four-man fire team break. They are patrolling in an unalert fashion break. The enemy is located at 8680-489-5. They're heading in a southeast direction. Break. 
They are suspected Durka Liberation Front. They have black and tan uniforms with boonie hats. They are clean and well kept. Break. The time is 0331. Break. Their equipment are three SKSs, one drum top MG. They are all wearing webbing gear, no packs. Break. My only remarks is that they are patrolling in a very unalert fashion. They are assuming they are safe and they are not expecting a fight or expecting enemy us to be in the area. Out. Thanks a lot. Much appreciated. Do brave deeds and endure.